the thing with there being a new iPad OS 16.1 and there also being a new Mac OS Ventura and now, I mean, a whole month ago, iOS 16 for the iPhones. Well, the thing is, they're all quite similar. I mean, intentionally, and, and it's a good thing. It's, it's actually, I think, one of the things that makes it so useful to work across these multiple devices. And wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you can just reach for the nearest one, reach for the nearest screen, and do pretty much anything on any of them. This time, though, they, they all seem like they're extra close together, more so than usual. The iPad update for this year, well, it's come out a, a month after the very similar iPhone 1, and there is a 58 key, it's about the very similar iPhone 1, but let me show you um, what's new and specifically different for the iPad this year. And then, you know, just for completeness, well, to save you clicking back and searching for the iPhone video or looking in the description for the link even. God. Um, I'll show you what, what I believe are the best iOS 16 iPhone features that have also come to the iPad. The, uh, the best features for you and me as writers. Hello, I'm William Gallagher and this is 58 Keys, which as ever, as always, is for writers like you and me who use and who write on, well, Macs and iPhones and particularly today, iPads. Uh, do subscribe because, I mean, there's always so much to talk about, but there's lots of new stuff. Now, you could, you could click a bell as well. Apparently, that's really fun. First up, first thing up, uh, Stage Manager. I think this is specifically best. Well, actually, no, I know I like it on the iPad, but I mean, it works best on the iPad Pro with either the M1 or M2 processors, which means last year's or this year's model, plus the M1 iPad Air from, I think, earlier this year. And it kind of sort of a bit works a little with slightly older ones. The maybe even as far back as the 2018 and 2020 11 inch and 12.9 inch iPad Pros a bit. Yeah, stage manager, by the way, it's not on the iPhone, uh, but it is on the Mac. And there's a 58 gigs about Mac OS Ventura, links below, as ever, which obviously mentions it there because it's good on the Mac. I think it might be better than the iPad. I'm not sure. I go back and forth on this, but it's definitely a useful feature. Plus, of course, the thing with this and most things with Apple, you don't have to use it. You do not have to use this new stage manager. You can carry on working with apps and writing away in Windows and Documents just as you always have. But if you do happen to turn on stage manager, well, then what you get is a quicker way to switch between jobs, tasks, jobs. You'll see. Swipe down Control Center and tap the stage manager button. That's it. It's on. And if you tap it again now, it's off. Um, unlike with the Mac, you may not see a difference immediately. And actually it all comes down to what size of iPad screen you've got. But whatever size screen you've got, once you have tapped Stage Manager on, well then tap away from Control Center to make that disappear so you can go back to work. Stage Manager now presents uh, your the thing you're working on at the moment, the, your current app. Uh, the thing you're writing in, yeah, that's it. The thing in your face is now in your face still. But the whole idea of Stage Manager is to help you concentrate on that app, on that current task. So Stage Manager shoves everything else, every other app out of the way. Now on the Mac, well, actually on the Mac, don't apps get in the way more than they ever do? On an iPad overlapping documents and windows, you can't find anything, you just, but yeah, even on the iPad, shoves them away. Specifically, Stage Manager shoves these other apps off into a sidebar. If you have a 12.9 inch iPad screen, you may well see the sidebar all the time, just like you do on the Mac. But if you don't, well, you, you, you won't until you swipe from the left of the screen. And by the way, that, that I mean specifically swipe with your finger, not from any attached keyboard or trackpad. If you do swipe from one of those, a keyboard or a trap, I like the magic keyboard and things, well, you, then you get controls for resizing an app. It's a different thing altogether. Swipe with your finger, and now you get the sidebar. And here it is on my 11-inch iPad Pro from last year. With that sidebar open, I can tap on another app, and that becomes the center app, the app in your face to work on. Double tap uh, somewhere away from that center app, away from any controls or menus, and well, the sidebar goes away again, and there you are, 
concentrating. That sidebar, what it does is it shows you recent apps. On my iPad there, it's showing uh, up to four. So you can tap between though, well, between what's well, at least five apps, isn't it? Uh, the sidebars for plus the app in the, the foreground, that one. So by itself, the stage manager, I mean, it seems quick. To me, it looks quick. I like the animation there, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's any quicker than uh, existing things like uh, swiping up from the bottom of the screen to show the dock and then tapping on an app that's in the dock to switch to that one. And there's also, I always forget about this one, but there's a five finger gesture available to us all. You can like grab your current app and throw it to one side. I mean, it's really violent and then be left with the next app underneath it. All of that still there, still useful. But say you have switched on stage manager. Now, swipe up from the bottom to get a dock, tap an app, and that app is now the center one, the one in your face, while whichever one you were using has popped over to the sidebar. That's how you add new apps to the stack of ones that you're currently working with. And now you tap on the sidebar to go in and out of the old app, the new app, any of the others, all of your most recent ones. Or swipe left to show the sidebar, then rather than tapping on app that's there to bring it forward, instead press on it and drag it out to the front. Now what you've got are two apps or more, if you want, occupying that front center in your face position. And those two or more apps, they work together. They are a pair. Tap on some other app in the sidebar and both of these foreground apps go away and then they come back together. So they're groups. There's like a pair of apps when you're doing something on the same ones. I offer that the idea here is, is less about switching between apps, but more, much more about switching between tasks or jobs. So you say I'm writing a script and I need final draft open. Um, maybe I'm going to have it alongside my outline in Omni Outliner. Have them both open, have them grouped together as one unit, one quite little unit on my 11 inch iPad screen. And now if I suddenly need to go off and do some emails, well, I can swipe to bring up stage managers, sidebar of apps, tap on mail and immediately mail leaps forward. But final draft on the outliner, go into the column in one spot, into the sidebar in one spot. So later then done with mail, if I tap on that little bit of the sidebar, I get final draft and Omni outliner springing forward together. I do think you have to keep practicing this thing for to really feel the benefit of it. You get it, you can see it, you'll forget about it. But once you get used to it, I think you might get very used to it. But um, as I say, I think I love is it doesn't get in the way. You, I mean, you seriously don't have to do this because I spotted recently, I turned on stage manager a few weeks ago and had completely forgotten. Um, there are new features in iPadOS 16 that, that we won't see until uh, developers take advantage of them, that they're, they're presented to developers to use. The Omni Group, though, for example, maker of my beloved Omni Focus and actually Omni Outliner that I just mentioned too. Well, yeah, they're already on the case. So in fact, let me show you in there, in, in Omni Outliner, let's use that one then. Um, in the new Omni Outliner, I've been fiddling with this a bit and there are, there are kind of two differences here, both in the toolbar. First, if you click on the document's name, well, now you get the option to rename it and that's just better, better done than it was. More obvious, yeah, and more easily done than it used to be, but, but it's kind of right. I can't remember how you had to fiddle to rename something on an iPad. I don't mean in Omni Outlaw, I mean in any iPad app. It's right now and good on the Omni Group for leaping on top of that. Um, but then it also leaps on this and increasingly more developers are, but Omni has got to there first. There are also these icons right there, those icons there. You see them in the toolbar. Look at them, lovely icons. As shipped, Omni Outliner, well, it has a couple of these in there, but it does not have the two you can see which expand or collapse outlines. I added those because that's the new thing. You can add commonly used features, functions, buttons to the apps toolbar on the iPad now. Have them right there when you need them, where you need them, really. Um, assuming the developer has updated their apps to allow that, and I'm sure they all will.
Uh, toolbars for quick access to options you need often, right? Uh, stage manager to quickly switch between tasks. These aren't the only things that are new uh, to the iPad with iPadOS 16.1, and there is actually one more that, that's a major addition, except you can't get it yet. Apple is bringing an app called Freeform, um, an app that lets you brainstorm um, as an individual on the iPad, the Mac and the iPhone, but also in, in particular lets you brainstorm away with other people on, on their devices, wherever they are in the world, all at the same time, collaborating and brainstorming in Freeform. It's just that this same time thing isn't yet. Apple keeps saying that Freeform will be coming out by the end of the year. I, I could be wrong about this, of course, and you don't know until you try it. It feels to me like it's going to be best on the iPad. Somehow I can just, I can just see us working on a Freeform document on the iPad with our hands, somehow. But, um, also, now, already here, and already part of iOS 16 for the iPhone, here's that thing I said of a very quick look at what else is good in iPadOS 16.1 for us as writers. Yeah, you can be too quick, can't you? Um, tell you what, let's work together on this. If you see something in this that you're more interested in than others, you, you want more details about than others, well, there is that whole 58 Keys episode about iOS 16, and there's a whole one about Mac OS Ventura, but I'll tell you what, if you see something you fancy, just play with it on your device. See what you think. Apple Mail on the iPad, and this is on the Mac and the iPhone as well. If you realize you've made a mistake in an email, the iPad and the other devices now give you a few seconds to go, whoa, gulp, realize what you've done or not done, um, and then, you know, undo send. So handy. I reason this increasingly. Maybe, maybe it's making me lazier about forgetting to check attachments or something, but it's, it's, I don't want to say it saved my life recently, but it's, you know, saved an injury should we say. Um, so there's that, the undo send is great. There's also a great new send later feature that I keep forgetting about. It lets you reply to someone, yeah, but to say, send the reply later, have it not go out until office hours tomorrow or two weeks on Wednesday. Undo send, send later. These are good features in Apple Mail. There's also a remind me feature though, and it isn't. It's meant to hide away a new email until, until you can handle it, until you're ready, yeah, 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 leave it till later. But instead it just kind of, yeah, there's the email, leave it in the inbox, you're gonna do something about it or you're not. Um, and there's uh, also a follow-up feature in Apple Mail, which is just dreadful. I mean, this has got to change. It intelligently figures out which emails you need a reply to, and then prompts you to follow up these people, follow up the recipient if they haven't deigned to get back to you in, a short amount of time. Most of that short amount of time, Apple Mail is just wrong. You know, it's occasionally okay. It would have been nice to hear back from your editor by now, but you didn't. And your iPad reminding you that you didn't is just, I mean, that's just miserable. No use in this feature yet at all. Whereas I love this, Apple Maps now has multiple stops on a route. How was this not always there? Um, I don't love this bit as it happens, but you may, you may very well relish it. You can now start collaborating with another writer over messages. I mean, I do collaborate, but almost never in simultaneous real time. Tell a lie. Actually, every two weeks or so, I do a thing collaborating on someone else's uh, shared Apple notes. Maybe this is something we can look at together. Actually, also every two weeks at least, I intend to sort out my photos and my contacts and I never, ever do. But maybe now because there's suddenly the ability to automatically find and remove duplicate photos and duplicate contacts. And it's, it's pretty smart. Actually, all of it is, all of it is pretty smart. iPad OS 16, well, okay, except for the remind me and the follow-up stuff in Apple Mail, yeah. Listen, I, I had to write a, a really quite long article about macOS Ventura way back when it first appeared in any form for testing. So I've been using it since, which means I've been using that the most. I only actually switched to iOS 16 for the iPhone a week or so before it came out and iPad OS 16 about then, so a few weeks ago. But still, with the iPad and this update, these new features, they I said it before, they just seem 
right, you know? Okay, all that swiping up and left and around and hot, yeah, with Stage Manager, that, that could be complicated um, if you want to use everything, but you don't. You'll find a bit you do. You'll end up using a few features in this and, and they'll be good. You'll like them. And this new iPad OS 16.1, I, I mean, I realize this now actually talking to you, it makes me like my iPad again. I mean, not that I ever disliked it. I love this iPad, but I feel like I'm enjoying it anew because of these new features. For now then, that's it for this edition of 58 Keys. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourself, eh? Write, write more too, and I'll see you soon.